Greetings nerdy list aficionados, and it's time for more alternate versions. They just keep on coming, and we can't stop, won't stop. Today we're going to be doing the top 10 alternate versions of Nick Fury. I'm Sasha, and let's get started. Number 10, Sir Nicholas Fury from Earth 311 or the 1602 universe. 1602 was an eight issue miniseries that ran in 2003. Also, it was written by Neil Gaiman. In this series, the Marvel superheroes exist during the Elizabethan era, and Nick Fury is Sir Nicholas Fury, and he is Queen Elizabeth I's chief of intelligence. In fact, he was modeled off of her principal secretary, or her spy master. This is in keeping with that nice blend Marvel likes to do of realism and fantasy. Also, in this universe, he killed the equivalent of Spider-Man. Actually, 1602 is an interesting series. I mean, sure, it's just a region in CAU, but it's a well executed one. Number 9, Regent Nicholas. This Nick Fury comes to us from the miniseries Avatars, Covenant of the Shield. This was a three issue series that was initially supposed to be 12 issues, which meant that, yeah, it didn't go so well. This was meant to generate interest in a fantasy setting, swords and sorcery, DD style Marvel Universe. This series is set on Earth spelt E-U-R-T-H, and it is set up for the shaper of worlds to observe how heroes work. Seriously, cosmic beings in the Marvel Universe do this all the time. So in this universe, the characters all have similar roles, but as knights and the like, with names full of apostrophes such as Stevan Jr., the son of Captain Avalon, aka Captain America. As for Nicholas, he watches over the throne of Avalon, with his elite guard as its shield. Get it? Number 8, Mutant X. Earth 1298. This comic ran between 1998 and 2001. It starred Havoc, brother of Cyclops, and he was transported to a parallel dimension, wherein due to a change in circumstance, he was the only member of his family to escape the Shi'ar, and is hence the leader of the X-Men. It also features the most hilarious retcon of all time, which was that initially, this universe was better for mutants, but then in issue 15, they retconned it so it was much worse, and the explanation was just that Havoc didn't notice. So anyways, on to Nick Fury. In this universe, he is still the head of S.H.I.E.L.D., but S.H.I.E.L.D. stands for the saviors of humanity by intervention in the evolution of life form deviants. They are an outlaw terrorist group, which obviously deals in the idea of exterminating mutants and actually just all superpowered people. They have a broad mission statement. I mean, in this universe, Graydon Creed is president. So what did you expect? Number seven. Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. So this is the David Hasselhoff version of Nick Fury from the 1998 film. And by film, I mean TV movie. Most people forget that this one exists and they are missing out on some glorious cheese. In this film, Nick Fury is retired, but is lured back to action to take down a terrorist group known as Hydra. They have a deadly pathogen called the Death's Head Virus, and they'll detonate over Manhattan unless they get $1 billion. So this film is a time and a half. That doesn't mean it's good, but good and fun don't have to be firmly tied together. The bench is mine. I can't hear you, Colonel Fury. What? No with the posts? Number 6, Nicholas Joseph Fury from the Ultimates Universe, Earth 1610. The Ultimate Universe existed from the years 2000 to 2015. It was originally conceived of as a way to get more readers to jump on board. It's more complicated than that, but we'll be here all day. So suffice it to say, pre-existing heroes were rebooted in another universe with new origins. In this universe, Nick Fury went from being Caucasian to African American, and his design was modeled off of Samuel L. Jackson, who would later go on to play him in the MCU. But this actually didn't happen right away. The Sam Jackson version appeared in 2002. In this universe, Gone was Fury's James Bond-esque origin, and in their place, he was initially a POW who was experimented on with a serum that gave him super strength. After that, his captors allowed him to escape, and he ended up joining S.H.I.E.L.D. and being involved in the Weapon X program. However, Wolverine's transport goes horribly wrong, and Fury discovers that General Ross is imprisoning the X-Men. He begins to question everything. He freed the X-Men, and ultimately, pun intended, became the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. That is the extreme Cliff Notes edition. A lot happened in the Ultimates universe. It quickly became just as confusing and difficult to jump into as the main universe. It was just weird. Black Widow and Iron Man sex tape, Pietro and Wanda having a relationship still as siblings. It was a weird universe. Number five, Earth X. Earth X was a 1999 comic about a dystopian future where everyone has superpowers because of Terrigen Mist. This comic was interesting, and it had two sequels, Universe X and Paradise X. If you put X after anything, it sounds better. So in this universe, Fury didn't make it. He's dead, Jim. He died, fighting though, of course, which is what you expect from Fury. Number four, House of M. 
So we've talked about House of M before. The dystopian universe created by the Scarlet Witch where she tried to recreate her children after learning that they weren't real in the first place and had been constructs of her mind the whole time. In this universe, humans are the underclass, and Nick Fury has survived the mutant purges that killed most humans in the military, and is kept on as a drill instructor because his skills are too valuable to lose. It looks like he may have died in this universe too, killed by Earshot. But Scarlet Witch undid this reality anyway, so it's fine. I mean, it wasn't fine because of the whole no more mutants thing. But it was fine for Fury. Number three, the Marvel Mangaverse. Oh, Mangaverse, why can't I quit you? The first part of the Mangaverse was between the years 2000 and 2002, and it was later resurrected as the new Mangaverse in 2005 to 2006. So the Mangaverse, Earth 2301, is a universe where the characters are drawn in an anime style, and they also partake in anime tropes. Mech female Iron Man for life. In this universe, Nick Fury is evil, and he wants to kill the superhuman population. This occurred in an arc from the new mangaverse, and his involvement is only implied at the end, as he had mind-controlled minions helping him. Or were they mind-controlled? Also heads up, he succeeded in that 99% death plan. Manga Nick Fury is competent. Number 2. Marvel Max Max or Max Comics is an imprint that focuses on adult content, stories that are darker and grittier than your standard Marvel fare. The first comic to come out under this imprint was actually Alias, which graced the world with Jessica Jones and her terrifying encounter with the Purple Man. Stan Lee actually didn't like this imprint and critiqued it. It actually involved an arc with Nick Fury, where he graphically strangled someone. In the Max imprint miniseries Fury, Nick Fury is a grizzled, burnt out war veteran who can't readapt to civilian life. He finds himself not only battling a newer version of Hydra, but bureaucracy, which is the true villain of many real life stories. Seriously. Max Fury's struggles just got a little too real for me. This isn't the only version of Fury to appear under the Max imprint, as not all the stories are related to or impact the main canon, but this version tends to appear the most. Number 1. You know who it is. Come on. The most popular alternate version out there. So popular most people think of him as the main version. It's Nicholas Joseph Fury from Earth 19999. <laughs> <laughs> Did I have enough nines? One, nine, 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 nine. I've got enough nines. The Nick Fury from the MCU. This Nick Fury is the second director of S.H.I.E.L.D. who was inspired to create a first response team to protect the Earth. Initially hinted to be because of Captain America, the first Avenger. Later retconned to be because of Carol Danvers, aka Captain Marvel. Fury has met resistance in his attempts to create a world protection unit, but post the incident, there was less reluctance. In the MCU, Fury has been a key player in most of the events the team has been a part of. From hunting down the key items to instigating meetings of people. This Nick Fury has become the version that people will look to when they think of the character, mostly because of the prominence of the MCU. So those were 10 alternate versions of Nick Fury. He's another character who doesn't get shifted around too much, parts of the MCU that is. He was important, but not thought of in the same way that he is at the time of this recording. I'm Sasha, and this was Top 10 Nerd. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you again for another video. Bye bye.